Welcome to a brief demonstration of the StageTop Online Configurator, a 2D planning tool to help you plan and print your very own StageTop 3D printed gaming table. To get started, on your PC, point your web browser to configurator.stagetop3d.com. Once you've made your way there, you're going to be greeted by an interface with three distinct sections. On the left is the component library, which separates all the stage top components into categories. The six categories are core, or legs, feet, play tiles, rails, and accessories. In the center, the planning space. This is where the components you select get added and where you'll lay out your table. And finally, on the right is the print list. This auto-populated list keeps track of all the parts you will need to print, the total amount of filament you're going to need, and an estimated total print time for the table you've created. The first thing you're going to want to do is select a printer profile. We'll go into more details on profiles in a bit, but for now, simply select one of the four pre-populated printer profiles. I'm going to go ahead and leave it on the default, which is the Creality Ender 3 V2. It's a really popular printer. You may be familiar with it. The next thing we're going to want to do is add some frames. Frames are at the core of every table and ultimately determine how big or small of a table we're going to make. For the purposes of this video, we will make a small two frames by two frames table. To begin adding frames to our table, we go to the component library under the core category. That's where you'll find the component listing for frames. In each component listing, you'll see the part name, an image of the part, the size of the part in XYZ format, an estimate of how long it will take to print and how much filament it will use. Now, both of these attributes are going to depend on the printer profile you have selected. Now that I found the frame, I press the Add Part button and a new frame appears somewhere in an empty area in the planning space. It also appears on my print list. Let's go ahead and do this three more times. Now to move a part, I simply hover over it Press the left mouse button and drag. All the parts snap either to grid or somewhere on the table where they should go. Let's go ahead and arrange these to make it a nice little two by two table. One important thing to keep in mind is perspective. The default view is the top view, which is as if you were looking at the table from above, while the bottom view is as if the table were flipped. I always find it easier to start building my table flipped over, so let's switch to the bottom view. The next component we're going to want to add are tile locks. Tile locks are placed into the frame and create a connector for play tiles to snap onto. Let's add just one for now. You'll notice when I go to move the tile lock, it will show me where on the table the part can be added. For tile locks, we recommend adding it to one of the holes marked number one on the frame. That's one of these four here. Let's go ahead and leave it right here. Unfortunately, it's a little hard to see a gray tile lock on a gray frame, so let's go ahead and change the color. To do that, I just find the part in the component library and pick one of the available colors. Green it is. Now, I could go ahead and add 15 more tile locks and drag them into place individually, but that's a lot of work. To make it a bit easier, some components have the autofill part button. When pressed, this automatically adds a part to all available recommended spaces on the table. Let's go ahead and do it for tile locks. Boom, we just added 15 more tile locks where they should go on your table. Let's get some legs added to the table. Let's go, first we go over to the legs category and we're gonna go with my favorite, which is the light legs. I'm gonna go ahead and pick a color. Let's make it orange, click auto fill. Now we have four legs. Because I'm going to be putting this table on my kitchen table, I certainly don't want to scratch anything, so let's add some feet. I select feet. I need light feet to go along with my light legs. Orange as well. Autofill, done. Next up, rails. Rails can be a bit trickier as they're four-sided and only one side can properly connect to your table. Let's go to the rails category. I'm going to go with standard. I'm going to make it my favorite color, which is blue, and let's add one. Now the first one's easy. We just take that and drag it to where we know it's going to go. The second one is where things start to get a little trickier. Now, in order for this to connect the table, I'm going to have to rotate it. There's two ways I can rotate it. One, I can actually just collect, select the arrows 
and actually pull and rotate it. It's that easy. Let's go ahead and add another one. Or I can click the rotate button. Rotate button will cycle through the available orientations it has. One more. And we're done with straight rails. All right, now let's add our corners. Make them blue. One, two, three, four. First one again, easy. Second one, let's rotate it. Third. And finally, there we go. Our table is getting closer, but before we can flip it over and add our playing surface, we need to tie it all together with frame locks. Frame locks are found in the core category. Let's go ahead and make them a distinctive yellow. And if we autofill the part, we just automatically added 24 frame locks to our table, and now it's connected. Time to flip the table. Play tiles happen to be the biggest category with so many choices of playing surfaces to choose from. I think I'm gonna go with cobblestone, which is one of my personal favorites. Now for this, we're gonna need one full and four corners. I drag them into, into place. I'm gonna have to rotate this one. Rotate as well. Final. And there you have it. But we're not done yet. We have one more piece we need to add, and that's rail clips. Rail clips are found in the rails category. And when we're using standard rails, we have to use a standard clip. That's all the way down at the bottom here. Here we go. Let's go with yellow again. Auto fill. And now our table is complete. If we take a look at our print list, we know this small table requires 73 parts, is gonna take over 251 hours when printed on the Ender 3 V2, and take just under two rolls of filament. If I select print, it won't start my 3D printing, but it will print out the print list for me so I can follow along and make sure I keep track of every piece that I need to print. But let's talk more about printer profiles. Now you'll notice if I switch to the Bamboo Labs P1P, my print time goes down significantly. The Bamboo happens to be a much faster printer than an Ender 3. But what if you wanna customize the print times based on your print settings or if you have a different printer? For that, you will need to sign in. Once signed in, you can select Manage Profiles and add up to three of your very own profiles. I'm gonna go ahead and add a new one. Let's call it My New Printer. Close this out. From the drop-down list, you'll see your new profile added. And once you're here, you can actually edit the time and the filament each part requires. That's it. You've now learned how to use the StageTop Online Configurator. If you have any questions or need assistance, consider joining the StageTop 3D Printing Facebook group or join us on Discord. Whether you're a tabletop RPG enthusiast, a board game fan, or just looking for a portable puzzle platform, we hope you enjoy your StageTop 3D printed gaming table. Thank you for your support.